Clear prop. Mexico Memorial Airport. Automated weather observation. One, seven, three, six, Zulu weather. Wind, three, four, zero, at three. Mexico driving Spring Hall 612 Quebec is back to Axiom 36 Mexico. And the performance will be still very, very good, even fully loaded on a hot day. Awesome. do is we're going to do a run-up. This is the Rotax 912S 100 horse engine and we'll run it up to 4,000. Check the right and left ignition. Should be very little drop. Very little drop. Let it sit there for a second. Controls clear and free. I do have flaps here. And we'll put down the first notch of flaps for uh, not really for short takeoff, but it adds a lot of stability right after takeoff too, and it adds a little bit of shortness on top of that. So generally you take off with... I do, I do, and I'll land with flaps, probably half flaps. Uh, full flaps are uh, 15 degrees, but you got to remember it's the full flap run. It's not just a uh, partial aileron and flaps. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stick, center stick, got the gas on, gas is on, I just got fuel. We'll let the engine warm up a little bit. The water's getting up to 180, 190 degrees. And we'll do a kind of a short takeoff, get out of the area, fly around, let you feel the stick, come back in and do a short landing. All right. And basically, I got steam gauges here. Uh, you know, if I go on a cross country, I'll use my, you know, handheld GPS or my phone for navigation or just charts. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really up to you. You know, some customers will deck it all out with all the new glass cockpits. But the key is on the 701 is to make it as light as possible. And if I could have this. I have no problem if you want to rest your feet on the rudder pedals. There right. you go. Just don't push them, right? Yep, <laughs> of course. And back to go. Traffic Spirit Mall 6128 Quebec is going to be departing runway 36. Will be a local flight for Mexico. Okay, we're going to check, make sure everything's clear. And approach is clear. So what we're going to do is line up on the center line. Stick about three quarters back. Ease in the power. Nose comes up. Add the rest of the power. which are three-inch bubble doors, which makes it nice. You and I are not even touching shoulders. And you're a pretty big, you know, broad shoulder young guy, young man. Yeah, no, that's nice. Appreciate the space. Yeah. I like the V-stick or the Y-stick uh, because your arm is naturally like this, but, you know, I can tell I'm, you know, hitting your leg a little bit. Some customers make a straight stick or a little taller. Across the country, I just like to lay my arm across it like that. That's my autopilot. We we'll check temperatures, oil temp, pressure, everything looks good. We know we got fuel. And we'll just head out here to this nice open area, do some turns, let you fly, come back and land. All right. 
The 701 is kind of unique because it flies like an ultralight, takes off short, lands short, very responsive. But, you know, you can go fly in a 30, 40 mile an hour wind day and it's not an issue at all. We're both ultralight, you know, 10 miles an hour. You, you know, ultralights, you just can't uh, fly them in windy days. Flies hands off. You don't have to trim it all the time. Yeah, I can probably trim it nose down just a little bit. All right, let me do a turn my way. You can see right out of the skylight the turn, and when you was learning in your 172, you couldn't see out the skylight. That's true. See that? Yeah. I rest my arm on my leg and just rotate my wrist so I don't over control it. Makes it very stable. Now there's a 45 degree bank turn, roll out right on the heading. And then uh, we'll do one your way. Very stable aircraft. You don't need to be a 3,000 pound airplane to be very stable. It's all, you know, aerodynamics and the wing loading. Go ahead and uh, feel the stick. Yeah, go ahead and do a turn. I can't look at any of that. <laughs> you gotta look outside, right? Right, right. So we're here at the August uh, 2024 Rudder Workshop. I'm doing a demo flight. And uh, we've got two 701s uh, being built here at the Rudder Workshop. And uh, got a young man here. He's uh, going to college to be an electrical engineer, correct? Yep, that's yeah. right. And uh, he just uh, received his private pilot about six months ago, so he thought it'd be nice to come to run a workshop, you, you know, and see how, what it's all about. And this is your first time in an experimental? Yes, it is. Okay, well, what do you think so far? Uh, I like it a lot, actually. Yeah. Go I'll ahead and turn that forward. way. Yeah. And then climb up a little bit, if you would. Yeah, just pull the stick back a little bit. There you go. Very responsive. Yeah, it is. To the north? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just kind of stay in this area. All right, level it out. A little bit of rain to the north northwest. Uh, train all right. Well, what do you think? It is nice. Let me just do some slow flight here. And we'll bring it back in the wide arc, add a little bit of flaps. Okay, so we'll five, five, turn to power on with G5. There's my flaps. We're in the 40s. Very stable. Don't have to trim it at all and everything. Does install this develops a high sink rate. And that's what you're going to use on land. You're going to develop a high, you're going to approach high, develop a little sink rate, seven, eight hundred foot a minute, and then control that with uh, the power so you don't uh, pancake in. Gotcha. And that's how you can land really short. And it does take a little bit of practice to get used to that. Now you could do a conventional, normal, flat approach landing just to learn the airplane. But to do, uh, let's just say, stole operation, that's what you would do. So what do you think about the Rudder Workshop? You've been working since uh, 9 o'clock. You've been working on it for about three hours, building the rudder, and you're about, looks like about 75% done. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it is going a lot quicker than I thought it would. Um, Good. You know, I haven't had any experience with, um, I mean, working with sheet metal, like, at all. Okay. Um, so, it's, you know, it was nice. It was, it was a pleasant surprise to be able to show up and... and uh, 
get as much work done on it as I have so far. Were you nervous showing up? Didn't know anything at first? Oh, yeah, Good. I was. I was like, oh, yeah. man, I sure hope they don't yell at me, you know. Like, <laughs> Well, we do the rudder workshop like you're building at home, and you know, basically I'm just overseeing and just giving you helpful techniques and tips. And you know, you got the drawings and the step-by-step -step photo manual or the manual, and uh, the parts are a match cold, so uh, it works fairly easy. And the rest of the 701 kit is being developed just like that: uh, the wings, the fuselage, the slats, the flat fronts. All right, well, I think we should go back and do a, do a nice short landing, show you what a sole landing is, and then uh, you can finish the rest of the rudder. And I think what we're going to do this afternoon, soon, since this is a small group, is uh, we're going to clico together the 701 fuselage and show you how it is, uh, parts coming off the shelf. Gotcha. That, yeah, then that'll be interesting to see. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I really like flying the 701. Uh, you know, this one, I built this one in 1998. I've got uh, 2,264 hours. Uh, I don't fly it as much as I used to, and I really miss it. I need to just start taking it out more and flying it by myself. I really, I really enjoy it, uh, flying the 701. And uh, excited to, to build a new demo eventually. And, uh, you know, we're not really changing anything on the 701, just making it easier build. So that, that's a nice thing. Gotcha. Yeah, that's little old Mexico over there. Mexico, traffic experimental 6128 Quebec is one mile to the northwest inbound landing 36 Mexico. Okay, we got gas undercarriage prop fixture seat belts. Pretty pretty calm day for traffic wise. Try to climb a little bit, get a little bit of that pattern altitude. Mexico, traffic, Spearwell, 612 Quebec is entering on the left island for runway 36 Mexico. So what I like to do is to beam the numbers, I'll bring back power, bleed off that airspeed, get into the white arc, and deploy one notch of flaps, start my descent, base to final. And then I'll add flaps according to how I feel the conditions is, or what, what's my, what, what am I going to do, you know. Sometimes I don't like to pull full flaps, if, uh, even though it's a hot day, or if I'm landing short. All right, beam the numbers, bring back power. And the reins will bring up the, the, the nose a little bit. It's just quicker to bring lead off the airspeed. And we'll go ahead and put two notches. Now this is where I might have to have a little area here. There you go. And from this point forward, I am just in almost a complete turn face to final. Nose down. Uh, typically, I wouldn't come out this far, but it's just a procedure here in Mexico. Mexico, traffic, Spermo 61, Trey Quebec is based to final 36 Mexico. All right, final looks clear. We're clear on the final. And we're about uh, oh, three quarters of a mile from touchdown. Uh, speed, if you want a good approach speed, I'd say in the low 50s. You're really not going to approach at 1.3 over the stall speed because otherwise you're developing a high sink rate or a lot of power come in. But when you start bringing the nose up, you start bleeding off that speed very quick. Now we're bringing it back power. We're at 52, 53. Bring up those, just add a little power because we're coming behind the power curve. Go, work the rudders a little bit, nose comes out, add a little power. So 
Oh, it is. Look at that. Yeah. And yeah, I could have stopped in, you know, 150 feet, 200 feet, easy, but no reason to slam on the brakes. Well, what'd you think? That was pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Do what? I said, you're right about the space. It's nice to have the shoulder room. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, we weren't tight. I wouldn't want to fly every day. Eight hours a day, you know, with two people like this, but you're not. This is not the type of airplane you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So the occasional cross country with two people, it's just fine. Uh, just out of curiosity, what is the longest like cross country you've taken this on? Oh, I've, I've taken this many times to Florida, to Arizona, uh, Oshkosh. Uh, you know, yeah, and it's uh, it's fun. I like flying low and slow, so I mean, it works out very well. You don't need to go 200 miles an hour. You know, enjoy the flight. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the adventure. Turns very well on the ground. Set your headset there.